This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Well, greetings, everyone. And welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Why is it that quite a few Christians and those who belong to Christian denominations, including Christian ministers and preachers, believe and strongly teach that this month, September 2015, the world will end? And why is it that I can tell you dogmatically in the name and with the authority of Jesus Christ that the world will not end? this month, and I will prove it to you from the pages of the Bible. Now, first of all, if you belong to the few who haven't heard about this specul speculation yet, and of course it's being taught as doctrine by some, and of course it's all over the internet, it's all over the media, it's all over YouTube and in other places. Let me just give you a brief synopsis of what we are talking about. Here's an article by The Independent, dated September 8, saying, Minority Christian groups have predicted the world will end later this month when they say a blood moon will bring about an apocalyptic meteor strike. Scientists say a blood moon will occur on September 28 when the moon passes into the shadow of the earth cast by the sun, a lunar eclipse, and appears dim and reddish. Some religious leaders believe that because this is the fourth consecutive lunar eclipse since April 2014, it is part of a T-thread which foretells a meteorite destroying Earth and the end of time. And then they are referring to some scriptures in the book of Joel, in the book of Acts, and also in the book of Revelation, which we will discuss. But first, the article goes on to say that the T-thread of lunar eclipse, with six full moons in between them, will coincide with an asteroid hitting Earth, was popularized by U.S. pastors Mark Biltz and John Hagee. They each noted that previous tea threads in history had coincided with noteworthy, tragic, and triumphant events in Jewish history. Present-day biblical theorists who follow the teachings have been worried that in a period somewhere between September 22 and 28, the world will end. And not only that, here's an article which was published as early as March 20, 2015, saying that Jonathan Cain was given a revelation from Almighty God and wrote a book by the name The Harbinger. Harbinger. And he said, I can tell you now that if Almighty God continues his pattern of judgment on the United States, the financial collapse of the U.S. dollar will happen on Sunday, September 13 of 2015, of course, nothing happened. And of course, to assume that it would happen on a Sunday is kind of rather odd anyhow. So again, that revelation came to nothing. Newsmax wrote on September 13 that a sizable number of Mormons in Utah are prepping for the end times, which they believe may begin this month. The scenario is divided into seven year periods and begins with a terrorist attack of September 11, 2001. The stock market crashed seven years later in 2008 and began a seven-year period of economic uncertainty. It has now been seven years since then, and the preppers believe things are aligning this month for the seven years of tribulation, as outlined in the biblical book of Revelation. The Jewish High Holy Day, talking about, of course, trumpets, began on Sunday, and September 28 will have a red full moon known as a blood moon. And then the article goes on to say that a Mormon mother of three has written a book. And in the book, she says that she had a near-death experience in which she saw that these events will take place by the end of this month. Now, the Mormon church has made a statement to the effect that, no, they do not endorse that teaching whatsoever. But my question is, what about all of this? Is there any reasonable possibility that some of these things could come to pass. Now, let me just say that, biblically speaking, there is none, absolutely none. And I will show you why. Because the Bible tells you very clearly the events which have to take place first, before Jesus Christ returns and the end of the world, this present civilization as we know it, will have occurred. And you see, Christ makes it very clear 
that first of all, there has to be what the Bible calls a great tribulation. And in Matthew chapter 24, beginning in verse 21, Christ is saying, then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved alive. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. You see, first there is a great tribulation. How is that great tribulation described? And if you keep reading in the book of Matthew, you will find that after the great tribulation has occurred, has begun to occur, then heavenly signs will occur, including, quote unquote, blood moons. Not before then. But first of all, let me talk to you about the great tribulation, because it is going to be a persecution against national and spiritual Israel. That hasn't occurred yet, and I will show you through whom that great tribulation will be brought about. First of all, in the book of Jeremiah, in chapter 30, beginning in verse 5, we read, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask now and see whether a man is ever in labor with child. So why do I see every man with his hands on his loins, like a woman in labor, and all faces turned pale? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It's a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Jacob's trouble. Jacob, from whom came Judah and other sons. Judah today, the modern Jews. But other tribes are mentioned as well. These are the so-called lost tribes, but they are still somewhere today, according to the scripture. And they will be persecuted by someone. And that is how the Great Tribulation is being described and how it starts. How it starts. You see, in the book of Daniel, we find a similar statement. In Daniel 12, beginning in verse 1, At that time Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. You see, there can only be one time of trouble, as bad as it has never been before. Jeremiah speaks about it. Daniel speaks about it. Christ speaks about it in the book of Matthew. And as I will show you, the book of Revelation speaks about it. But that hasn't happened yet. Because if you go back to the book of Daniel and look at the previous verses in chapter 11, you see what is happening. It's talking about a very charismatic political and military leader called the King of the North in the book of Daniel, called the Beast in the book of Revelation. He will invade the promised land. He will put his headquarters in Jerusalem. Then it says there will be great tribulation. None of that has happened. The beast hasn't even materialized or manifested himself yet on the world scene. We don't even know who that person is. And we read that it's going to be 10 nations or groups of nations in Europe, which will come together and give their authority and power to the beast. None of that has happened. So the great tribulation has to happen first. Now, when that happens, we read in the book of Revelation, we all know about the several seals, the first four seals of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, followed by the fifth seal, the martyrdom of the saints, because yes, my friends, the great tribulation refers to a persecution of national and spiritual Israel. Today, if we are true Christians, we are spiritual Jews. And we are reading in the book of Revelation in the fifth seal that this martyrdom is going to take place. You see, then and only then comes the sixth seal. And the sixth seal talks about cosmic disturbances, talks about heavenly signs. Notice how they are being described in Revelation chapter 6, beginning in verse 12. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. Then, when that happens, after the Great Tribulation has begun, which lasts for three and a half years maximum, not seven years as some erroneously teach, only then will it be important to watch the heavenly signs. You see, because that follows the Great Tribulation. It goes on to say, the stars of heaven fell to the earth, as a fig tree drops its late figs when it's shaken by a mighty wind. 
and then the sky receded as a scroll, when it rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand. There is a time sequence, my friends. The great tribulation, the heavenly signs, followed by the day of the Lord, the day of God's wrath, which apparently is going to last for one year prior to the return of Christ. In the book of Matthew, we read about this too, that first comes the great tribulation, then comes the heavenly signs, then comes the day of the Lord. The book of Joel, which is being quoted in some of these articles, talks about these time sequences in Joel chapter 2 and verse 30. It says, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. The time sequence again, first the great tribulation, followed by the heavenly signs, followed by the day of the Lord. You see, September 2015 hasn't even started the events yet. So it's not going to be a time when Christ comes back, when the world will end. Furthermore, let me just say that Christ said, nobody knows the day and the hour and the times and the seasons. He warned us specifically not to try to figure out exactly when Christ comes back. He says, be very watchful, watch the signs of the time. There's a parable of the fig tree. It tells us, you know, to watch for certain events. And when you see those events taking place, including the arrival of the beast, including the occupation of the promised land through the beast, including a great tribulation against spiritual and national Israel, then you know, of course, that the time is near. That hasn't happened yet. Now we need to pray, God, your kingdom come, because that is how it's going to end the disaster and the terrible problems we are having on this earth. Yes, we should pray for that. We should pray to God that he would speed up the times and the events. But let's not make the mistake of coming to all kinds of wrong conclusions because somebody through the imaginations of his own heart or maybe through the spiritual influence through non-godly forces comes to certain ideas and conclusions. In order to help you to understand better as to what is prophesied and what you should be waiting for, we have published a free booklet, Biblical Prophecy from Now Until Forever. Biblical prophecy from now until forever. It gives you the time sequence as to what is going to happen from now on until the return of Jesus Christ and beyond that. If you really want to know what is going to happen and when approximately, you need this booklet. So please ask for it and we'll be happy to send it to you. And until next time, this is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.